We're going to go then to North Carolina, and we're going to go, going to, go to Matthew in North Carolina. Hi, Matthew. How are you today? I'm doing well, Doctor. How are you doing? Doing well. Thank you. So my, my question is, I found out about my wife's second um, affair beginning of October. Hmm. I had to leave out of town for a month. Hmm. The affair um, was over um, at that point. I busted her and it, I made it public and everyone knows. So hmm. it was over at that point. Um, during the time frame before I left, we made a decision that I wasn't going to make any decisions until I got back from my month long work trip. Mm -hmm. Well, during that month long work trip, I found out about what my legal options were. And pretty much the, the first option was a basic, um, divorce pretty much would make her destitute. It, it was the worst option a, a person could ever have loss of all rights of everything. Um, I decided to take that off the table because she attempted suicide once or twice during mm. that time of frame I was gone. Mm. And um, mm. when I came back, I made the decision to uh, uh, before before I before I came back, I, I told her that my my boundaries right now were that she would be she would go into personalized um, specific therapy. And that she would give me access to her electronics because she had one of her friends that was telling her not to give me access to electronics so I could validate that she's not making any contact with the affair partner. Mm -hmm. Backstory to that is this is not her first affair. I found out in 2010 that she had carried on an affair of a short period of time mm -hmm. with an ex-boyfriend in 2002. I didn't find out till 2010. Okay. Subsequently, in therapy afterwards, I found out she had a personality disorder. How did you find that so out? That's where the special. Uh, she got diagnosed by our therapist. He was um, uh, a doctor a therapist and had the ability to say, "Yes, you're you have a you have mild borderline personality disorder." And he treated me for an entire year to help deal with with her outbursts, deal with her inability to emotionally regulate. And uh, unfortunately, he died. And also, unfortunately, it didn't work. Um, mm. Yeah, so her, so pretty much right, right now I have, I have the, her personality disorder, if it's not attended to, and I'm going, we're going to a specialist now that specializes in the only therapy that is, seems to be good for it. I told her right now we're, I would, I would assume we're in the process of reconciliation but because that is a stipulation of carrying on the marriage, that that is managed, that is found, and that is fixed, mm -hmm. how do how do I manage an extended reconciliation that also has the possibility of not being a reconciliation and a dissolution of the of the marriage? We've been married 19 years. Um, I I'm I'm looking at this. There you know could be six months to a year before I start seeing any real changes in her now. Get, to give her credit, she is absolutely super wife right now. She, if she was a quarter of the wife she is now for her entire marriage, I would have been a happy man. Mm -hmm. And that causes its own problems with me. So I'm trying to find out like, how do I manage knowing that there's a possibility that this cannot work because that that's it. If, that, if that's not done, I, she's not a safe person and I cannot stay with her anymore because she will cheat again. That's part of the, the personality disorder. So the person she that she's seeing now, the person that she's seeing now, is this a licensed professional counselor? Is it a physician? Who is she seeing now? Yes. It's, 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 it's a, it's a licensed professional therapist that specializes in the only okay. type of, uh, and the, is she also additionally seeing a psychiatrist to have meds to help with this? Uh, no, it was brought up originally, um, with our first therapist and mm -hmm. they said that because she's mild on the spectrum, mm -hmm. she, she, you know, most, many borderlines are very physically reactive. Like they hit people and that's right. not, that's not the part of her, her things that she okay. does. So, well, let me see. I'm going to give feedback to you. What I heard, Kimberly, really tell me if you heard the same thing. What I heard is this, mm -hmm. we have some extenuating circumstances, for example, you know, mild uh, diagnosed borderline personality disorder mm -hmm. for those out there. If you decide you want to know more about it, don't Google it. Don't. 
Please don't. <laughs> because most of the stuff you're going to run into out there, if you say, I want to look this up and find out what it is, most of the stuff you're going to see is just absolutely wrong. If you're going to, if you're going to get information on things like this, be sure you get it from somebody who knows what he or she's talking about. So mm-hmm. I would trust, like, for example, WebMD as opposed to somebody out there saying, well, I've yes. read about this. But even there, you get into the... Oh, in, yeah. It's like when I go to WebMD because I have a cold and then I convince myself that I have colon cancer, right? <laughs> so please or, just... Or nose cancer. No, right? Yeah, something. Uh, and something crazy. So please just don't. Leave it to the professionals. Yes. Right. So he said that she was diagnosed by a... Okay. And so here's what I'm hearing the question being. Okay. Someone. We know that she has mild personality disorder. Mm-hmm. She's seeing a person that's helping her with that. And apparently he has confidence in that person. Mm-hmm. Um, talking with a particular approach that this person is using. Mm-hmm. And here's what I heard him say. This person who's helping my wife now is saying it could take six months to a year for all this to work. But at the same time, in the short term, I'm seeing a great deal of improvement. I mm-hmm. don't know that I trust it. Mm-hmm. I think that maybe she's going to go the other way. Mm-hmm. And so the ultimate question, if I'm hearing it correctly, and I want to hear if you heard the same thing, the ultimate question is this. Okay, so if I go through this reconciliation process, and at some point, she begins to move back the other direction because of this uh, pers- borderline personality disorder and a mild case of borderline personality disorder. What about if, uh, What I'm hearing is, is it? Do I? Will I have put all this effort into it just to find it blowing up in my face? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm hearing. Mm-hmm. Is that basically what you heard? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so the answer to that would be basically, I understand you have a unique situation, unique mm-hmm. things that you're facing, but it's the same thing anybody does in a reconciliation it process. It really is. It's, it's always, I'm going to do my same. work. I'm going to do what needs to be done. I'm hoping that you will do your, mm-hmm. your part of it as well. Mm-hmm. But there is no reconciliation process that has an absolute 100% guarantee of it's going to turn out just like we expected to. Mm-hmm. And so when you take this risk, if you're thinking, I'm going to put all this effort into it and it still may blow up in my face. That really is true of everybody that we work with. Mm-hmm. That's yes. always a possibility of what occurs out there. Now, yes. if you love her, and he said, what, 19 years? Mm-hmm. If you love her, you've been married for 19 years, and uh, she's hurt you at least twice, the affair in 2002, the more recent one. And I understand that you're putting up boundaries and borders and all those kinds of things. I would too as well. But the real question then from me back to you would be, if you love her, is it worth mm-hmm. you risking being hurt again mm-hmm. in an effort to rescue her? Right. And that's the question for you. Is it worth it to you to risk the fact you're going to get hurt again mm-hmm. to, in that process, hopefully be able to put this marriage back together and, and it winds up being what it's supposed to be? And nobody can answer that question for anybody except that dumb person. I can't that's tell right. you if it's worth the risk. I 100% agree. The other thing that's coming to my mind in this is we've worked with people and I've even had a couple of friends where one of the spouses had some kind of diagnosable condition. And uh-huh. in these instances, it be- can, it can become very easy. And I don't know Matthew or his wife, and I'm not saying that he is doing this. This is uh-huh. just for everyone to hear. Um, it, be- it can become easy to start viewing your spouse as sick. Mm -hmm. to view them as having the problem, to view and for everything to kind of stem around, well, this is because of their issue. Mm -hmm. They, Mm -hmm. you know, when I was trained as a marriage and family therapist, that's one of the things they warn against, which is it is the person is the person. They are not their diagnosis. That's correct. They're not what's going on within them. And so my encouragement would be continue to see her as your wife, Mm -hmm. a woman who is separate and apart from these extra things, because it's still hard different but still hard for the couples who get married and then their husband or wife ends up getting paralyzed you know Mm. that it's still a person and it's still extenuating and it's still hard it's different and i get that there's hurt involved with the borderline personality issue that's that's going on but but i think they're a lot more similar than we also might think so that's my encouragement Mm -hmm. so make the decision Mm -hmm. you may get hurt that is absolutely true in your mind do you love her enough is there enough history in those 19 years that you think is worth the risk Mm -hmm. and only you Only you can decide that. Mm